Hi, everybody in the group. I want to um, say something I, I feel is really important for people to understand. I'm going to try to be as quick as possible. Um, first of all, I want to say I didn't just pull this out of my imagination. I've been paying attention to this subject all my life. I could uh, conceivably create a huge bibliography uh, of references of other uh, scientists, doctors, philosophers, I mean psychologists, who um, who would sustain what what I'm going to explain. If if but you know I think that people, if you pay attention and you really think about it, you'll see that it, it's really not necessary. It makes sense. Um, I just read something in the group about somebody saying. Um, Homosexuality is defined by uh, same-sex attraction, and this is commonly said. Homosexuality is not defined by same-sex attraction. Homosexuality is defined by, first of all, it's not a person. It's not, you can't define a homosexual. You have to define a person afflicted, suffering, um, homosexuality as a behavior of, uh, possible by human sexuality. So human sexuality can uh, experience homosexuality and it's more satisfying psychologically to some people than others. Why it is, some, why it is more uh, attractive and satisfying psychologically to others to some than others has to do with mainly with development, but it's a composition of things. It's a simultaneous uh, composition of through. In other words, to understand homosexuality, you have to understand the three forces and the three areas that define it. And those areas are sociology and uh, society, social education, and, and the messages of of culture and the dynamics of a psycholo psychological dynamics of society, or in other words, sociology. The other force, and this explains why it is not attraction that defines it. It is not biological attraction that defines it. The other sector is chemical biology. In other words, all the neurological, chemical, biological forces of the of human physiology that have to do with sexuality and homosexuality, because it is sexuality. And the third, um, the third sector is personal psychological development. In other words, the, the development, the psychological development, perhaps there is some chemistry involved here too, uh, before and after birth, but mainly it's the development of the child, and therefore psychology, not as uh, it would be, not as it would be natural psychology, the natural dynamics of, of psychology that come with us, with our mind, with our brain, but the psychology that develops because of uh, trauma or complex or what have you that create a need. So it really has to do with the development of self. Basically, um, it has to do with how well we recognize our own gender by the acceptance and the reciprocity and bonding with others. And so if we don't believe that others see us that way or like us as a man or in the case of a woman as a woman, it's hard, you know, this should be, in the case of lesbians, this should be done by a woman. What I'm doing <laughs> would have to be done by a woman to, for her to put the right words as it is uh, particular and different and, and, and uniquely characteristic to the, the, the female uh, homosexuality. So, you know, that said, um, now why is it not attraction that defines it? Basically, because the chemical and biological forces that have to do with sexuality are really general to both genders. In other words, 
uh, they're 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 uh, they're strongly bonded to love and affection and safety and feeling that uh, you can be yourself uh, or you're confident and these kinds of feelings and the the um, arousal and all the biological and chemical uh, force dynamics that happen. And this part of our physiology is really not so picky about uh, what gender it is. <laughs> Believe it or not, it sounds incredible, but uh, you know that's why we joke around and and you you know men get defensive if you stroke them a certain way and say, don't do that. Maybe you're going to be sorry. You know you don't get me excited, right? It's a joke, but there is some truth to it. Um, you can cajole somebody um, through uh, physical affection affection and maybe desire or for example why do prisoners for example if they haven't had sex for a long time don't really care anymore and don't care to discern or two guys left on a deserted island right these have to do because the the biological chemical these examples uh, come from the sector and the area that has to do with the biology and the chemistry of sexuality. And so to say that um, men that are attracted to the same sex uh, is what defines homosexuality is incorrect because in reality we're all attracted to some degree to any to both genders. Men find other men um, f physically handsome or attractive and there's a whole area of culture and, and language that jokes around about this. He's so good looking that I would I would go to bed with him, right? And even though they're straight men, it's a joke. But um, it goes to show that really attraction in itself is not so discerning. What does keep us uh, basically going with our uh, opposite and, and what makes some men that, that are afflicted by homosexuality kind of prefer to go with the same gender is much more profound, and it's, uh, dwells more at the, in the area of psychology. And so they are attracted, but it's not a physical, it is a physical attraction, but it doesn't start there, in other words. Uh, they are looking for um, a feeling, a satisfaction that has to do with essence, the masculinity, the confidence, the the self-assuredness of a male is very attractive to somebody that doesn't believe in their own manhood still with in other words afflicted by homosexuality and then the physical embodies those emotions and so they they may say i'm attracted to guys that are hairy chested but really it's because that hairy chestedness represents um the, the emotional the psychological part so it is important to redefine how we understand homosexuality because if we don't, we're basically, we need to change the game, as they say, create the game changer. Because if we don't, um, homosexuality will continue to occur because it is something that nature resorts to according to how people develop in our starting with their parents and then society and the people around them, experiences or traumas that they may have, complexes that they may have developed. And then, of course, there is the part that may be um, the biological chemical part of, is not so much that uh, nature does not decide that it wants to uh, assign somebody to same-sex attraction. It never is nature's intent. Uh, but what may be the case is that uh, the natural sort of psychological balance of, of a person's constitution, mental constitution, their personality, their natural personality, in other words, may be uh, such that they are uh, more strongly impacted by the same uh, conditions or afflictions or ways that the parent treated that person that in another person would not really result in so much trauma. May The person may bounce back and, and see, babies know what they 
what they need. They look for, they look at the mom and they look at the father, and this is how we develop our relation to the males and the females of our society and ourselves. If, if it's a little baby girl, the mother will have a lot to do with her self-perception and how she feels she needs to relate to the world and what women in the world are, are about, all about. Start with the mother and the same thing about with her view of men has to do with the father and how she should act towards men has to do with the relationship she had with the father. And so all these things come with the baby will be naturally sought. If you deprive the baby of a father or a mother, that's not going to stop the baby from continuing to look for its own gender and people and therefore continue to try to learn and nurture itself on these, these things that need to grow up and develop in the, uh, in the, the next male the next male over or the next female over the uncle the older brothers uh the aunts whoever these are important because when we start off we're kind of like a blank slate and so we need to develop all our ideas of of sense of self and our understanding of males and females uh, as we're growing up by the males and females around us and those two first ones are our parents Homosexuality, the development of homosexuality and human sexuality has directly to do with things that happen in this process. Um, it's the simplest thing to understand, and it's unbelievable that our, that our country has been leading this, this craziness, this, uh, this uh, trying to reinvent the, what is already simply done by Asian over, you know, it's unbelievable. But in any case, it's important that we put this in the right place. If something better than we ever had before is to come from it, if we don't, it will continue to uh, to be the way it always has. Homosexuality will occur because there will always be deprivation, lacks. Um, uh, neglects and things that happen in the raising and development of children and so the desire the, the satisfaction in finding or discovering or noticing homosexuality will continue to occur and as long as we blame the individual all we're going to do is push people underground and homosexuality will continue to exist in whatever numbers our society is provoking and causing it to happen but if we understand for what it is then we will own it and we'll, we'll be able to say well obviously that we believe a dad has to be this way with the mother or this way towards the children is causing some men to go overboard and therefore their children uh, the amount of, of children that develop homosexuality is this number and so we'll be able to make a better society um, in, in, in sort of a, in a, a more um, a moral spiritual greater wisdom insofar as how we treat our children not just our parents but our society our friends how and, and then by not being spooked or condemning or isolating because really the the gay community is an is an exclusion in sorts it's putting people in a group and sort of they're there, however they got to be there, whatever, they're born that way, you know, it's not me, you know, I have gay friends, I'm cool, I'm modern, but they're in a group. So it's also a form of exclusion and uh, neglect. Uh, that instead we are able to own the occurrence of homosexuality and human sexuality means that as a future society, as a future culture, we won't be so freaked out about it or so neglecting of it. And we'll simply know, like, actually, it was pretty common in many societies, Latin societies, Middle Eastern societies, African societies, that people just kind of know that this is, this is happening to the child because of the way the father is an asshole or is, you know, the mother uh, doesn't let it, stand and discover and experiment and be a little boy you know she's always sitting on top of him and so people knew already had without before without freud without psychology people already knew that 
uh, it is us. We're the ones who dumbed ourselves by create, bringing ideology and bringing um, moral chastity or sort of uh, religious kind of judgmentalness on, or, or, um, or, or, or civil ideolo ideology of, of, you know, with pseudoscience to back it up that we invented in order to be able to uh, satisfy our civil agenda. And we, we moved away from the natural um, know-how, wisdom that people had when, you know, without psychology even, that it happens to kids when they're treated a certain way by their own. So it's not, it wouldn't be something foreign, but wouldn't you know that it was all along the right area, the right way that we should be. And so when we lose our fear of it, our judgment, condemnation of it, our, our, our uh, or sort of our segregation, our civil segregation, uh, positive civil segregation of it, um, we'll simply own it and say, hey, you know, it's no big deal. Look, you know, the kid is obviously starting to develop homosexuality and, you know, we, we may be able to see it when they're four or three or five. And right away we'll be comfortable with saying, you know, somebody talk to the dad, talk to the mother, see the way you're treating them, just like we do today. If you you're scaring your kid, don't shout at them, you know, an uncle might give his brother some advice about the way he's raising his child, or we'll be as, as comfortable with sexuality. And if that is not possible, we'll simply know what to do as neighbors. We see a kid that kind of doesn't believe in himself. One of the things we know that can happen is homosexuality will develop, will be sought. And so right away, we act a certain way as neighbors, as friends, as relatives, you know, we give them extra sort of whatever we will be educated as a society, you know, some way to, for them, for him to have more confidence in himself or, um, you know, encourage this or encourage that. In other words, we will be able to deal with it without being freaked out about it. And that's what we need to achieve. If we don't become this kind of wiser, intelligent, society about our own about the homosexuality that can occur in our in our development we will it will continue to happen it's not going to fighting it uh challenging it condemning it is just going to result in what the world has always been and then there will always be people who who feel bad that these people are chastised or segregated and try to make them feel special and give them a special role or or have them as special friends on certain occasions like the Romans did and you know the play toys of the senators or what have you you know there's always going this situation will never change we'll, we'll continue to be what we will always be about it now isn't it ironic that the occurrence the appearance the emergence of psychology uh, and um, the emergence of the psychological discourse about homosexuality didn't didn't meet up and combine with the wisdom that many cultures already had. They didn't realize they were they had a, a common sense kind of psychological type wisdom about their children. Um, but we just did, you know. And of course, it wasn't very developed a sense it was an intuitive sense and so it's tragic that these two didn't meet up because then psychology would have would have evolved uh, to no longer um, sort of focus on trying to do healing exercises on the individual but it would have done what it always should have done which is to concentrate on how society is allowing this person to naturally um, come out of it um, by by concentrating on their relationships that will continue to nurture that person growing up and at the same time um, this society that acted intuitively uh, on, on, on these children would have been educated by a, a higher uh, by an advancing science of psychology regarding homosexuality and so, which is the same thing. They both would have met, it would have become one thing. 
<laughs> instead of uh, instead what we did is we we dropped a rock in between those two sides and we decided to no longer be smart about it and turn it into a civil ideology uh, a political issue and other uh, uh turn it into other values and so we got rid of the intelligence regarding homosexuality tragic absolutely tragic we, we were there we were right there and uh, when Christopher Street and Stonewall happened, we just decided that it was going to be about something else. It was going to be about, uh, you know, freedom of choice and, and uh, individual rights and, 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 and nonviolence and nonviolence and a bunch of other things that killed the intelligent scientific discourse about which was growing at the time uh, completely. Completely tragic, and so many lives. Well, in any case, uh, so this is it basically. This is what I'm trying to get across to the group. Doesn't seem like anybody's watching the videos or listening to me. I don't know. I hope this time it comes through. <laughs>